Um, I've, I've been working in, all of you have been working with this data model um, for a very long time. Um, I created that graph um, for the book that we wrote, when was that, like 10 years ago? And we still have that data model and I want to change it. I want to scribble over it and I want to do changes. After 10 years we have a lot of experience um, what we are doing, what we want to do with OSM data and um, I think it's time to allow us to think about this. Um, this is what I want to talk about. First a bit of background, how objects, nodes, ways, relations in OSM world, we have tags, what object identity and object relationships mean in uh, uh, OSM about locality in our data and then I'm picking a, a few specific problems that I want to talk about that we can maybe address uh, and, uh, and look at how, how we're going to do this in the future. Um, so background, uh, we've got objects, everybody knows um, uh, the OSM data model, we've got objects, uh, nodes, ways and relations, so object has, has this type, an object has a unique ID uh, per type and an object has tags and there's also a version change that time same user ID um, uh, and user on those objects, I'm not going to talk about these things. Um, this is uh, boring for this kind of, uh, for, for the stuff that, uh, that I'm concerned with here. Um, nodes are the only object that have a location, that have a coordinate. That's very unusual. Most GIS systems uh, in the world work in a different way. Uh, but um, for us, the, the nodes are what actually connects um, our data to the real world in a way. Um, and they, um, they have this strange double duty as on the one hand they provide the locations for mostly ways but also a little bit of uh, two relations um, and on the other hand they can be real objects or what we call a point of interest or so, so here's a restaurant or a post box or whatever it is and they can be both which makes it even more strange so um, if you have a node on a road that says here is, there's a traffic light here, um, then the node has double duty as um, the lo a location on the way and also um, saying that th there's a traffic uh, light there, but it's also part of the geometry of the way. Um, we have ways that can reference up to 2,000 nodes, um, and a way can be a line, or when it's closed, it can be a line or a polygon. Um, we all know that. And that's a bit weird often. Um, and um, then we have relations, and relations are this weird flexible thing that binds other objects together in some magic way. And um, there, is, uh, there is not one relation basically, but there's lots of different types of relation, and they have to be handled spe specially in uh, any kind of software. And most of the stuff that mappers do with relations um, is, I mean, most of the stuff is, is a few relations area, uh, uh, multi-polygonal relations, turn restriction, a few things which are well understood and, and used often. And all the other stuff is people put in things and have a very vague idea how it is ever used and most of that is never used. I don't know anybody um, who is using site relations, for instance, or anything like that. Maybe there are. Um, so any, type, any number of members, uh, uh, members have a type, an ID, and a role. Um, that's always a bit weird that we have a role there and not a key value like we have for the tags. Um, uh, but there it is. Um, members are mostly nodes away, but the relations can refer to other relations, which makes things really, really, really complicated. Um, then we have tags. We all know that. Unlimited number of tags per object. Um, format key value, 255 characters. Um, keys are unique. Uh, that was changed way back at some point. You could have the same key twice, but that is not allowed anymore for a long time now. Um, tags have no types. They, um, there's always, there are always strings. The keys and the values are always strings. And there is no structure in the tag beyond key equals value if you just look at sort of the data model. But tags do have types. Um, we have put types sort of on top of this string thing 
Um, so sometimes it's in like in a name, it's just any kind of text that you put in there. Uh, other tags are, we, uh, we have a Boolean type, um, if, if you want to look at this from a sort of computer science-y kind of view, or they have a enumeration like a highway tag has uh, about 20 different values that are the common ones and um, everything else nobody uses anyway. Um, and this has worked for a long time for us um, uh, with those types. We have put a little bit of hierarchy or some kind of structure often in the keys. Um, so we, are, we, we use the more or less unstructured uh, or simple structured key, uh, uh, key equals value structure of the tags and put other things on top of that and that uh, makes problems. But it also allows us to be really, really flexible. I know this, there has been discussions about this kind of tagging and um, but I happen to, to like it, mo not maybe this specific way of, uh, of, um, uh, of um, uh, doing it with the max speed, but you can have a number in there, you can have a number with a unit, or you can have specific uh, values um, instead of having to say, okay, max speed equals zero means, oh, we don't know, or something like that. Like, that, that's what computers people often do, but we can just type it, just put it in a, in a, in a nice, uh, nice name. There. So these tag, sort of tags are um, uh, often quirky, inconsistent, and, and all that, but, um, but it works. And um, so I think we need more back best practice documents there. It would be nice to write up a sort of what our experiences are, how tags can be structured, and um, what um, good and bad uh, experiences we have there. But I think tags are good the way they are. Um, object identity, this is something that comes up again and again. People want to have uh, IDs um, that uh, are stable over, uh, over time. And uh, so you say, whatever, we have here the Palace of Westminster and uh, in Wikidata there's a queue, whatever number for the uh, Palace of Westminster. Uh, you could call, call the House of Parliament, but is House of Parliament a different thing than the Palace of Westminster? And is the Big Ben, is that part of the Palace of Westminster, but not, it's not part of the House of Parliament? And you get into all sorts of what identity even means. And OSM just has said, okay, we don't care about this. We, this is what we want to do. We want to draw a map or a 3D uh, thing of the building and there's um, hundreds of OSM objects in here and they together make up this thing, uh, maybe that is the Palace of Westminster. And um, if it burns down and it's recreated again, um, we don't have to think about is this still the same palace or not and do we give it a new ID or not. Um, we don't care. We use the IDs um, not uh, because they refer to real world objects, but we use IDs um, to allow editing of, of the objects that we have to refer back and say, okay, this is the thing that I want to uh, edit, or for uh, relating one or some object to another. Um, which brings us to object relationships. Um, so there's I would say three kinds of object relationships that we have in, in OSM. We have the explicit one using the ID. So the Y refers to the node with the ID 1, 2, 3, uh, or a relation refers to a Y with the number 4, 5, 6, um, that's explicitly written down in that data object. But we have also implicit relations. We have it through tags and through geography. Through geography, that makes sense if something, something is next to uh, something else, there is a relationship there. If something is inside, um, say, the city of Milan boundary or something, that tells us something. Um, and we also have relationship through tags. So all um, the roads in Italy, um, they have a specific, they have, some, have a highway tag, and that relates them to each other, and they have the location because they're in Italy, and that relates them uh, to each other, and that means we don't need an explicit relation in this case. We don't need to have something like a uh, relation uh, that binds all objects, all highways in Italy together or something because we have this relationship already through text and geography. Um, so the explicit relationship is, is good because there's no ambiguity. You say this is the object I'm referring to, not, um, not something, uh, uh, I yeah, something like. Um, but it's often expensive to handle. You have to 
keep this relationship going and if something is deleted or changed or something you have to make sure it works if you uh, split up a way into two ways which is something we do often um, you have to figure out okay there was a relation a relation pointing at this way uh, which one is it supposed to point at now or both of them or only one or the other um, well if if it's if the relationship is through the tags then this um, this um, this doesn't matter um, so implicit relationships um, make objects more independent and it allows often working with OSM on objects without a database. If I look at a file with OSM data and read through it and I'm, I, I don't have an explicit uh, relationship from this way to another way or something, I, this object stands by itself and I can work on that by itself. It has all the tags. Um, and, and, and um, that's all that I need for many operations, and that's, that's a nice, um, nice thing. Um, so um, the collection relations that people like to do, uh, all motorways in Germany or something like that, um, uh, yeah, we don't, we don't really need that, I think. And we don't need those either, associate street relations or is-ins. Um, Relationships between objects make changes difficult. If I'm moving a node, um, if the user moves a node what he, that is in a way, what he's thinking about is moving the way. This, is, this highway is, is slightly going somewhere else. It's about the, the way that is the, the object we are thinking about and interested in at that point. But the actual change in our data model is in the node and not the way. Similar problems with, with relations and all that. Um, so, uh, yeah, relationships are hard. Um, if we can get, um, get around without them, uh, it's easier. Um, and what about locality? I mean, we are a geodatabase. We are about things in the world and there's uh, the, 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 the whole world, but in many cases we are only interested in very specific local places somewhere. Um, and uh, if, if we, if we, if we um, work with the data, we are only interested in the sort of data that's, that's right around it. Um, um, and and, and having, having this uh, feature that local data stays local and is not connected to something else somewhere uh, uh, a wide, uh, a wide, then that makes um, uh, using it easier. So I, I'm getting to the problem. So um, first look at the problem size. There are 4.6 billion nodes at the moment in OSM. It's an order of magnitude larger than the number of ways, which is two orders of uh, magnitude larger than relations. So anything that's related to nodes, I think, is important to fix first. That is our biggest, uh, where we have the biggest problems in uh, in our work, and 98% of all nodes are only used to locate, uh, to, to give coordinates to the ways. They don't have any identity of their own, really, um, but because of the data model, we, we have it. Um, so if you have a situation like this, here's some roads, um, and uh, connected in a road ne network, and there's a white uh, way and, and a uh, pink uh, or uh, way and a, and a yellow way and they connect at uh, certain places and you can think of the nodes, the, the red nodes here as something, okay, they have sort of a function where they connect up ways um, or uh, in, in the case of the barrier of the, of the gate there where there is something there that they describe but all the white nodes are only there to give the shape to the way uh, and I think we can get rid of those. Um, at the moment if you, if you work with OSM data, the first thing you basically everybody has to do is you get all, uh, all the nodes, all the locations of the nodes, you put them in RAM so that you can exit them quickly and then you add this information to the way so you, you do that. And it, 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 pre it prevents you from using just uh, uh, ways by themselves, you always have to refer to this other thing. Um, and uh, it, makes, it makes it uh, very uh, difficult, especially to work with changes um, and figure out, okay, you always have to keep the information. This way was really created from the location of these nodes, so if the node changes, I have to change the way again. So um, I'm proposing to doing something like this. 
um, going from going from the uh, what we have now with the locations on the nodes uh, directly putting them in the way and maybe only doing that for those things which don't have any um, uh, any uh, tags uh, maybe doing it also for those that have tags uh, maybe get rid of that reference also I don't know I don't know yet what is the best way and I can't know everything that people do with all this data and I want to talk to each and every one of you and figure out sort of what you are doing and what kind of data model would um, fits best for you um, and of course everybody's gonna scream then oh god no this is gonna be horrible we'll get get this situation um, and the ways will not connect up uh, and something like that. That, that by the way that's a real um, picture it seems um, and and um, that is not true we can do that we can in the editor uh, make still sure that if you move a node others will snap to it and all of that every vector drawing program does that um, it doesn't need the unique ID um, so um, so that would still be possible um, yeah, that's what I just said. Um, if you want to play around with this a little bit, the Osmium command can uh, put the node location on, on the ways, and then you can, uh, in a PBF file or an XML file, and you can uh, try that out. Um, um, but as I said, there's many, many things we have to figure out, um, uh, all the details, what exactly, which nodes are we going to uh, get rid of and which nodes we need to keep, and all that. <laughs> Um, then there's another problem um, mentioned that earlier that if you have a closed way you don't know whether it's a polygon or a line string and sometimes it can be both. So in this case um, there is a land use which makes this a polygon but there's also a barrier uh, which is the fence around uh, the property and, um, and that's, this, this can be difficult to handle and, um, and um, basically all the software that uh, uses OSM data, software like OSM to PGSQL or the editors, um, they have to have a list of tags um, that uh, did, uh, tell them, if you find this tag in a, in a closed way, then this is an area or this is a, this is a line string. And that's uh, very, very difficult to write generic software um, to do this correctly. Um, if you look at it, there's, um, uh, 355 uh, million closed ways, 96%, 96% of them are um, uh, areas, most of them are buildings. Um, and I, I tried to filter out and uh, had, a, had a 187 filter rules to figure out, sort of put them into categories, uh, find out w what type each is. And um, there are still um, uh, undecided, uh, there's still four million that are undecided that I couldn't figure out with those rules. I need more and more rules and, and I need that, everybody else needs that too. And uh, I think we can fix that by just putting a little flag um, on the ways. Um, and there's an easy way of introducing that but, um, and, and that can be done easily in a, in a backwards compatible way I think. Um, relations are great, relations are flexible and great for experimenting. Uh, but if you have relations like, uh, like this, the European hiking trial uh, going through half a continent, um, or if you have uh, a huge, um, um, huge relations with, with thousands and thousands of members, if you have uh, this, every change that you do somewhere over here will result in this relation changing and all the people watching this down there, they get a change for something that which happened over there. You have a version, that's the highest version I could find in the planet file, uh, 3,119 uh, 3, uh, for a relation. That we have to fix this. We have to find ways of better handling relations, maybe by putting them into smaller um, pieces or something. Relations are often broken. This is, um, we, we, we did a huge effort last year to fix broken multi-polygon relations. That's the dip you can see. Um, and, we, and since then it has been creeping up again. It's just one type of ways they, uh, way they can be broken. Um, so I, I don't know yet what the solutions are. Um, and um, one thing is with the areas, we can take out the areas and maybe invent a new data type for that. I talked about this years ago. Or, um, I don't know, um, but let's talk about this some more. Um, also, there's a workshop uh, a bit later today um, 
uh, Roland Olbricht, uh, the, uh, the overpass guy, and he's also going to talk about uh, similar things that, uh, that I'm talking about, and he's looking, uh, looking more into relations and how to, how to work on that. Um, and yeah, so uh, I'm jokingly saying that I want to start a revolution, but it really is an evolution. I mean, we can't, um, we can't have a huge change in, uh, uh, too quickly, and we need some consensus in the community, especially we need to have, obviously, buy-in from developers. I talked to a lot of you and a lot of people here at the conference, and there wasn't a single one who said, um, no, 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 this is all horrible, and we don't do that. Basically, everybody said, yes, this goes into, I had that problem also, and um, so that gives me hope that we can maybe do that. And we also ha we always have to keep in mind that uh, we have a single bottleneck here, which is our central database and a central API, and we have to make sure that it works for that case too. Um, uh, this repository that I started is not much there yet, but um, this is where we can have a discussion. So um, uh, please come there, and I'll, I'll fill it in the next days with uh, the in more information that I have, and uh, we can open issues there and, and discuss the, uh, all the different things. Thanks to Mapbox, who is, um, as part of my contracting work for them, um, allowed me to work on this, uh, on, their, on their bugs. And uh, yeah, thank you for listen, is listening to me. So thank you, Joffre. <laughs> I don't know. I always ask a question. Uh, Jochen, do you have any numbers on how many nodes are shared between ways with this partially common geometry? Um, I assume the n number is probably low, but it's obviously one case which would have to be looked at. Yeah, so I'm, um, I've written some tools um, and, uh, to, to create statistics like that to figure out, for instance, when you have two areas our land users, whatever they touch, and they have a common common border. And yes, I do have numbers, but I don't have them uh, at the moment. But that is definitely something we have to go through and figure out, sort of, for each use case that we have, basically, um, uh, how many there are. Is this a big problem and and not? And and there's always one person who says, okay, but what what are we going to do with the lift that? Um, has two nodes on top of each other, and if, if we don't have the nodes anymore, how are we going to do that? And yes, we have to figure out all those corner cases. But um, the big case is uh, is the buildings, um, which are so simple. And yeah, I don't. Yeah. I, I actually think the elevator thing is not a problem. Then we just keep the nodes for that kind of situation. So, right. Any other questions? There's one in the back there. Yeah, what is actually the main goal that you ha have with this? I mean, it's especially, I think, you want to have easier processing of multi-polygon data or polygon data. Is that uh, the main goal? What is the main goal? So th the, I want easier processing uh, of the data. Um, and that means uh, that at the moment uh, you need a huge machine to do this in a, a, in a, in a normal amount of time. And this is going to get worse and worse the more we, references we have between objects. This is getting more and more difficult. And I want this, uh, a student to run the, the planet on, on their laptop. And um, mm. I want um, to have changes that mean something. Uh, that are easy to process because this is one of the, the big problems we have been grappling with this for years um, in uh, in OSM that uh, we want to people want to see the changes happening in their area and make sure they are okay and all that and uh, it's very very difficult um, to to handle this and so there, there's there's those cases where just the data processing is made unnecessarily complex and and uh, and expensive really um, if you look at the hardware that you need and all that, and um, I want to make that simpler. I do think that part of the problem is also slightly being overtaken by the hardware itself, because I've actually been doing some real-world tests with data from the whole of Europe and importing it on a 
simple laptop using OSMTP to SQL. And the main thing that I see is that if you have an SSD and you put in enough uh, swap space on the SSD, uh, and I've, run it, I've, I've, I've have it running on VirtualBox, if, if there is enough swap space there and, and you have 16 gigabytes of RAM, you can import it, but you need to have the swap space. That's important. And but I think with swap space, the, sp the speed on an SSD is enough to do proper work. It imported in 17 hours, and I, yeah. I don't see a real big problem on low so hardware this, nowadays. As yeah. uh, hardware nowadays is obviously better than it was. But if we if we change this. So if, uh, if you do some of the uh, changes I'm proposing here, we need hundreds of gigabytes less in, uh, in uh, well, dozens in, in, in RAM and hundreds in indexes on disk. Um, this is a huge change. And this um, uh, is not, also for, not only for today, but OpenStreetMap is growing all the time, obviously. So this problem is getting worse and worse. And um, yeah, Paul wants to. I'm one of the open, the OSM to PG SQL maintainers, and by far the biggest issue right now with anyone processing it is the um, node to parent ways and ways to nodes mapping, which takes up, which is, for a planet wide import is a, on the order of half the space and more than half of the time of uh, the import, and it is the single greatest barrier to being able to uh, import unlimited hardware. Uh, it is definitely possible to import with li limited RAM, but the big issue is the big 350 gigs of uh, table and index needed to go back and forth between nodes and ways. We just time for just the last two questions. Uh, okay, just a comment to the colleague there. Uh, OpenStreetMap is open data, and it should be open standards. Uh, for geospatial data, there are, there are a set of open standards, in, uh, and this would be a step in the right direction. So it's not about just processing power, it's about standard, uh, standardization and uh, compliance with open standards, and this is the right, something in that direction. At least I uh, see it that way. Thank you. Wait, wait one second. Yes. Before I knew, uh, got to know OpenStreetMap, I was more familiar with those open standards that you're talking about. I mean, uh, and I've. But I've always felt that, uh, on the other hand, that uh, this kind of data model that OpenStreetMap currently uses is very similar to what traditional uh, CAD systems used to do, uh, like AutoCAD and other stuff. So it's not completely unfamiliar. And I think uh, there is, uh, it's just another type of data model. And I'm, on the one hand, I'm, I'm, I agree that some change might help, but on the other hand, there is also the fact that this, there is just simply two different data models, and both have their advantages and disadvantages. Um, I'm, I'm, as, as to the being able to process it, I think OSMTP to SQL already, since it does process to simple features, and it creates the database as we all know it more or less from a simple features perspective. I personally am not entirely sure if, if, if the advantages of changing the whole model will outweigh what, what, what we have now. But anyway, I, 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 can, I, can see, I see logic in it, but I also see that both models have their advantages and disadvantages. And 
It's, it's, yeah. it's a difficult discussion, and I, I fully agree. And that, that, is, that, is, that is true, and we, ha we have to look at all the advantage, advantages and disadvantages. From my experience, and that this is what I'm hearing from other people too, is um, we have to think about what we are doing with the data and what most people are doing with the data and optimize for them. And sure, there will be cases where things get more difficult if we change the data model, and there is obviously um, the difficulty of the, doing the change itself and uh, all the developer time we spend on that and we can discuss whether that uh, makes sense. Um, but yeah, I want to start the discussion. I think we are out of time. Um, thank you. Thank you, Rossi.